Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are talking about the difference between air to air and air to water intercoolers. And as you can see, I'm not in my bedroom. I'm outside. I did it mom. Now why am I standing next to a BMW? Well this is the BMW X3 M40i. That's a bunch of letters and numbers, but the engine is the B58. Also some letters and numbers. It's an inline six cylinder turbocharged three liter engine and it replaces BMW's previous N55 engine, which was also a three liter inline six cylinder turbocharged engine. But the difference between these two engines, and one of the major differences between them, is that with the B58, this modern engine, BMW chose to move away from the air to air intercooler, which the N55 used, and switch to an air to water intercooler in this B58. So why did BMW switch to an air to water intercooler? Well, let's talk about the differences between air to air and air to water. And just because I'm outside doesn't mean I forgot my whiteboard. So here we can see the difference between the two systems. So starting with the air to air intercooler, Cooler. You of course have your air come in through the air intake, then go down to the turbocharger where it goes through the compressor, then back to the front of the vehicle where it passes through the intercooler, the heat exchanger in purple right here, and then it goes back to the engine into the intake manifold. Now the air to water intercooler is a bit more complicated, so it starts off the exact same. You have your air coming in the front through the intake and then passing through the compressor of the turbocharger, and it's then fed directly to the intake manifold where you have an integrated intercooler. And so the intercooler is actually placed back in the engine. Uh, in the case of this BMW, it's integrated within the intake manifold. And then you have a separate cooling system to cool that intercooler, which is inside of the intake manifold. So you have a coolant which passes through here. So there's different passages for the coolant and for the air to go through. So the coolant will pass through this intercooler and that is then pumped to the front of the car where there's a heat exchanger for this coolant. So it will pass to the front of the car and then it'll be routed back once it's been cooled back into this intercooler and then the air that is passing over that intercooler will be cooled by that liquid which is passing through. And again, they're in separate chambers so you don't have any mixing of this, uh, but that air then flows through into your engine and works uh, you know, out the exhaust just like this engine once it's gone inside. So going back to our original question, why did BMW switch to an air to water intercooler? Well, really the reason for doing this is to reduce the volume between the turbo charger compressor and the intake valve. So the distance that that air has to travel, the volume of air between the turbocharger and the engine itself. And so by using an air to water intercooler, you can place that intercooler wherever you want. That's the advantage of it is it can go anywhere. So they chose to integrate it within the intake manifold. And by doing so, they're greatly decreasing the routing that that air has to travel. So instead of having like an air to air intercooler where you pull air from the front of the car, you then bring it back to the turbocharger, you then bring it back to the front of the car, pass through an intercooler, and then go into the intake manifold. Instead, you just take air from the front of the car, it goes to the turbocharger, into the intake manifold, and then into the engine. So a much shorter routing, and as a result, you get better response, less turbo lag from the system. So what are the advantages of the air-to-air -air intercooler? Well, as you can see, it is a much simpler system. So you don't have to worry about fluid leaks like you would with this. You don't have the additional heat exchanger, the pump, those lines for the coolant. Uh, so that's a benefit to it, and also because because it's simpler, you don't have all these added weight uh, from the coolant, from the extra heat exchanger. You do, of course, have additional piping for the airflow, but overall, it's a much simpler system. Now, of course, this intercooler must be mounted wherever you have airflow. So ideally, that's going to be the front of the vehicle. You could also do it on top of the engine, uh, though you won't get quite as much airflow there. And that means you could also have the engine have that heat soak coming through that intercooler when you don't have sufficient airflow. Now, another big advantage to the air-to-air -air style intercooler is that you're only exchanging heat once. And so with this air-to-water system, you have to rely on ambient air to get the temperature of the coolant that's routed through as low as possible. And then you, of course, can't get that coolant all the way down to ambient, which then passes to the intercooler, and then you use that to cool the air that's going into the engine. So you're exchanging heat twice, and so it, you know it's not going to be quite as efficient of a, of a system for reducing heat when you don't have uh, you know, just a single time that you're passing air through. So here, you're relying on ambient to cool the air that's going directly into the engine. So you, of course, can't get it down all the way to ambient, but that's what your benchmark is. It's ambient rather than the coolant that's within here, whatever temperature that is, which will be slightly warmer than the ambient air. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those below.